today I'm honored to be a guest in the home of a woman who's truly made a life by what she's given. Critically acclaimed author, Columbia Business School MBA, philanthropist, fashion icon, JBFCS trustee, a board member serving uh, the Couture Council, the New York Women's Foundation, and, and countless other nonprofits, uh, an honoree at this year's Stony Brook Southampton 61st Annual Summer Party, the one, the only, Jean Chaparro. Hi, Jean. Thank you so much for uh, being such a gracious host and, and allowing me to come visit you in your home. Pleasure to meet you, George, and thank you very much for granting me this interview. Well, you're, uh, thank you again, and I'm looking so forward to speaking with you and learning about uh, you know, all you're doing in, in philanthropy and giving, but, but first, if you don't mind me asking, that's just a beautiful dress. Uh, uh, what can you tell me about it? This dress was designed by New York fashion designer Zach Posen, oh, yes, and right. it's, it's a personal favorite. I purchased it a few years ago, and I believe we need to wear our clothing and we can repeat our looks. And so this particular dress I've worn a number of times, and every time I put it on, I'm very happy to wear it. That's great. I, I just you don't know the feeling of if when you, when you have something that it's just kind of uh, like a, you can't describe how certain clothes will just make you feel. Uh, you know, it, uh, and uh, so that's uh, that's amazing. And, and uh, Zach Posen is a, is a wonderful designer. Well, thanks again, uh, uh, you know, for for having me. And thank you for joining me. And. I'm happy to answer any questions you pose, so long as I can answer. Sure. Okay. Great. Great. So now, Jean, I, you know, I, I'm just always curious because I, I, I know that how you know devoted you are to philanthropy, and I was just wondering if there was one moment where you decided that you wanted to devote so much of your, you know, your time, your knowledge, and your resources to, you know, making an impact and helping others. There wasn't one particular moment when I decided. However, I believe that my upbringing played a pivotal role. I attended 12 years of Catholic school where the nuns taught us the importance of giving back. But I will add that all religions teach the importance of giving back. And then my father was a school teacher and he was very devoted to his students and of course to his family. But he would come home from a day's work and talk about the students and how much their progress meant to him. My mother was a stay-at-home mother. She liked to paint and draw. She was very talented. But her whole focus was the family. So I grew up in an environment where thinking about others and promoting the well-being of others was a priority. And then my first career was as a physical therapist and I worked at St. Luke's Hospital in New York City. That's an inner city hospital. I saw a lot of suffering, people living at or below the poverty level who also had serious health conditions and it was very sad to see. When I got married and later raised a family, I decided to get involved with my daughter's schools for two reasons. One, I wanted to see what was going on and be involved with the educational process that my daughters were receiving, but I also wanted to help the schools out. And it was very fulfilling. I was a class mother, and then when my oldest daughter was in eighth grade, I was head of um, getting full participation of the annual fund, and the annual fund is where you're raising money for the future of the school. Slowly I began to join different charity boards, and then finally when my daughters went off to college, I was an empty nester, I decided to get more and more involved, and now today I'm on eight charity boards. I love it. It takes a lot of my time, but it's very fulfilling. You know, they say when you give, you get, and there's a lot of truth to that. I am a fortunate lady. I live a good life. I believe it is my obligation to give back. And it, uh, it's just, uh, it's, it's so great to, you know, know that you're making such a difference. And uh, I know you're also, uh, uh, you know, very committed to, you know, animal rights. Uh, and um, you're, you've, uh, you've uh, rescued and, and adopted many, many pets. Uh, what can you tell me about uh, 
uh, some of the uh, organizations you've been involved in, uh, you know, that uh, advocate and, and help animals? Yes, I am involved um, on the honorary board of the Southampton Animal Shelter. I have chaired their annual gala for about six years. They honored me one year, which was wonderful. But they say when you're honored, you know, you have to give back. You have to do something. Don't, they don't just honor mm -hmm. you because you're a good person. They honor you because you can help them. Um, so I'm involved with that. And then I'm involved with um, my daughter's charity called Global Strays. Global Strays is a 501c3 that sends finances to developing nations, to animal rescue groups. We focus on Nicaragua, Colombia, and the Dominican Republic. It's a rather small charity right now, but it's growing rapidly. And the work is desperately needed. The funds are desperately needed. Then I'm an ambassador for the American Humane Society, and I try to do what I can. I love animals. I believe they are an extension of beings, and as Mahatma Gandhi said, you can judge a nation by the way it treats its animals. I love that quote. Oh, that's an amazing quote. I yeah. never heard that before. Yeah. So this is your, your book, which uh, uh, um, Successful Philanthropy, How to Make a Life by What You Give. Uh, what can you uh, tell me about the, the book and how you, it, it's, uh, is it, uh, how, how does, it, does it give, for someone just starting out who wants to uh, get involved in philanthropy, would this be a good, good book for them? Yes, it is a guide and then an inspirational piece. And I believe that all of us can be philanthropists. If you don't have large amounts of money to give away, you can give your time and your knowledge. And then when you have financial resources, you give your financial resources. So in this book, I redefine the word philanthropist. And I say that anyone can be a philanthropist. And I was very honored to have Georgina Bloomberg write an introduction and then the philanthropic consultant Scott Elkins to write a preface for this book. I think that your listeners would gain a lot from this book. Of course, um, you can buy it on Amazon and then on barnesandnoble.com. We have an ebook and we are just about sold out wow. of the hard copy edition and I'm expecting that we will um, publish um, or the publisher because this was not a self-published book yes. but the publisher is planning to um, do another do run. another a, uh, a, a, a paperback, paperback edition. Paperback, that's great. So more and I'm excited about that. That's very exciting. Wow. Well, thank you, thank you so much for you know, inviting us to your beautiful home and, 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 and telling us about how others can, can, can ever, how everyone essentially can be a philanthropist. Uh, and uh, just to, to ask you, I, I'm, I'm very uh, um, looking forward to uh, attending um, uh, Stony Brook Southampton Hospital's uh, 61st annual summer uh, party, which will really be a, a great to help the emergency room and raise funds for health care. Uh, but uh, was, I was going to ask, uh, this will be airing in September, is there any uh, events or fundraisers coming up in the fall that uh, you would like our viewers to know about? Yes, well, first of all, there are going to be many, many fundraisers in the fall. And the three that I'm particularly interested in because of my own involvement are um, the New York Women's Foundation Gala on October 8th. I will be co-chairing that gala to take place in New York City. We will um, honor a couple of great people. And what we do is we empower women out of poverty. We raise money um, and we make grants to partner organizations so that we can help women raise themselves out of poverty by getting job training and learning skills that they can use for their entire life. The second thing that I will be chairing is the Surgeons of Hope Gala on October 15th. We will be honoring the Mexican movie star Diego Luna. And what do Surgeons of Hope do? We send cardiac uh, surgeons to developing nations to do surgery on children with uh, congenital heart defects. I love what they do and I feel very committed. I'm not on their board. Um, but I'm committed to the cause. The third event that I'm involved with so far is 
the French Heritage Society Gala. That's a French-American charity. We support scholarship in France, and then we help restore uh, uh, historical sites in France. We raised a, quite a, a bit of money for Notre Dame and for other groups, and it's an exciting charity event that will take place on November 21st. That's what I know of so far. I'll be supporting a lot of other causes by going to other charity events. I'm involved with the Couture Council, which is the museum at FIT. On September 5th at Lincoln Center, we will be having our annual luncheon. This kicks off Fashion Week. We will be honoring Christian Louboutin. Oh, and, wonderful. Uh, mm. um, I'm excited about that, and um, that's um, one of my yes. favorite boards. Uh, for fun, um, because I love fashion and style, and um, the museum, um, we fund the museum at um, FIT, um, the it's Couture on Council. So 7th Avenue, uh, or, or, or no, it's on... 7th um, and 27th Street. Yes, that's yes. great. And that's education for the, the next generation, generation, which is so important. And I want to say one thing to all of the viewers, education is key. So if you have the opportunity to go to college, and to better yourself through education, take that opportunity. Education opens a lot of doors. I'm very grateful. I have a master's in business administration from Columbia University. I have an undergraduate degree in physical therapy from the College of Physicians and Surgeons at Columbia University. These degrees were great door openers. They paved the way for a good future. I encourage everyone to seek education, encourage your children, encourage your brothers, your sisters, your friends. You can never be too well That's educated. True. Thank well, you. Well, cool. So many great words of wisdom um, from Jean and, and uh, we're really, really excited. I'm going to uh, take a lot of that to heart and uh, thank you to our viewers for, for uh, tuning in and looking forward to um, the Stony Brook Southampton uh, Gala on, on Saturday. Thank you. And thank you, George, and uh, thank you for this opportunity. And I am certainly looking forward to that gala. So uh, Jean's book, Successful Philanthropy, How to Make a uh, Life by what you give. Uh, the introduction is by uh, Georgina Bloomberg, and you also had a, a philanthropic consultant uh, who was Scott involved. Elkins, who wrote a preface. Wow. So you can uh, get the book uh, on, on Amazon. Uh, it's uh, now will, will be available in paperback. Uh, is that correct? Coming up soon. soon yes. uh, available on Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. That's great. And uh, any th last uh, things you want to uh, tell our viewers? Uh, yes. I very much believe in education and I believe it's a great door opener. So to the parents listening and then to the students, try to get as much education as you possibly can. If you have the opportunity to go to college, go to college. If you have the opportunity to go to graduate school, go to graduate school. Education can truly change your life. Do all you can, work hard, study hard, and encourage those around you. And finally, very important to believe in yourself because you are important, you can effect change, you can make this world a better place, and you can be a success. Thank you. Well, Jean, well, thank you so much again for uh, having me in your home. I just wanted to say, I love your, your shoes, uh, just so red and uh, love the heel. Where, where, where are they, they from? Well, thank you, George, for this wonderful interview. And my shoes, I am wearing them in honor of Christian Louboutin, the designer. And on September 5th, the Couture Council, the group that funds the museum at the Fashion Institute of Technology, will honor Christian Louboutin at Lincoln Center at our annual luncheon fundraiser. So in honor of Christian Louboutin, I'm wearing these red shoes. I happen to love the color red. They're comfortable. They're called the Simple Pump. I've had them oh, for a number of years. Classic, yes. I don't know what they look like mm -hmm. now, but they're comfortable and they make me happy. That's great. And then, and then the, for this will the, the, uh, the event on, on September 5th is going to inspire the next uh, generation of, of designers and uh, who will attend FIT. And uh, it's it's such a such a great great cause. Agree, and it's one of my boards that I particularly enjoy. I love fashion, 
I love style, and I love that the Couture Council works with FIT and works to promote education and future generations of fashion designers and people related within the fashion industry. Very exciting. Well, thank you again, and, and uh, have a wonderful evening, and I'll see you on thank Saturday. You. Thank you so much.
in the horrific shooting in El Paso, Texas. A moment of silence, please. Thank you. As I look around this room, I look around and I see an incredible group of supporters. You all make an incredible difference to the Stony Brook Southampton Hospital community. This is a community of wonderful, wonderful people who do so much to make good health care on the eastern end of Long Island a reality and a possibility. And one thing that many people don't know about this hospital is they think about Southampton and they think about very wealthy people. But the truth is, this hospital serves 25,000 people every year from all backgrounds. Excuse me. From the very wealthy to people that live at or below the poverty level and no one is ever turned away. Which I think is extraordinary. My husband and I got involved with the hospital a number of years ago. I chaired the scouter three times. It was a wonderful labor of love. And I know that when you're an honoree, they don't honor you because you're a good person. They honor you because they want you to promote the community and all the good that this hospital does. And so tonight, who do we really honor? We honor the doctors. We honor the medical staff. We honor the nurses. And we honor all those that work to make Stony Brook Southampton Hospital a great community and a place that, if you get sick, you'll want to go. So I'm going to end on that note, but before I do, I want to thank Chuck Scarborough, our MC, Robert Schalliner, an extraordinary president, Steve Bernstein, where are you, Steve? Steve Bernstein, the Director of Development, somewhere. And then Varela Cameron Riley, who worked tirelessly and endlessly to make this pos possible. We have fabulous chairs. I love these women. Where is Cindy Willis? I don't know, she was up here before. And um, Laura LaFara, the junior chairs, and the former chairs. I would love for the former chairs all to stand up. And I have a list. Jean Remmel. Jean Remmel is the grand dame of this hospital. We must honor her for all the good she's done for this group. Anne Grimm, another great woman who works tirelessly. Sheila Fuchs. Melanie Ramball. Sandra McConnell. Summer Sparkus. Barbara Black. And Mary Gay McGee. And if I've skipped anyone, please forgive me. We've had a wonderful group of former chairs. These women work tirelessly and really give their life to the hospital. And on that note, I just want to thank all of you as supporters. Thank you very, very much. I thank my husband.
smile so warm And your cheek so soft but There is nothing for me but to love Just the way To word your tenderness grows, tearing 